Hi, welcome to the next training session of SAP New GL Accounting. So we'll be continuing with the configuration steps where we left. So we have already did with the create company code and now we'll be moving to the second configuration step that is define ledgers for general ledger accounting. Here we define the ledgers that are to be used in the general ledger accounting. There can be only one leading ledger for the new GL but you can have number of non-leading ledgers. Now define ledgers when we talk about define ledgers here ledgers refers to the leading ledger and the non-leading ledger. As a part of leading ledger is concerned the leading ledger is already predefined into the SAP system by SAP. So we'll not be creating any leading ledger in the SAP system, but we will be creating the non-leading ledgers. As far as the leading and the non-leading ledger are concerned, we already discussed. Just to have a brief, the leading ledger is based on the same accounting principles as that of the consolidated financial statement. It is integrated with all subsidiary ledgers and is updated in all company codes. You must designate exactly one ledger as the leading ledger, which is a compulsory part. In each company code, the leading ledger is automatically assigned the settings that apply to the company code like the country uh, sorry the currencies the fiscal year variant and the variant posting period variant so these are some of the basic things which the leading ledger automatically takes from the company code as far as the non leading ledger is concerned the non leading ledgers are parallel ledgers to the leading ledger. They can be based on local accounting principles. Local accounting principles could be if it has a subsidiary company in India. So India's gap or India's accounting principle will be the local accounting principle for the non-leading. Similarly, there could be multiple non-leading ledger. If that particular company has subsidiaries in other countries around the world, so those number of different non-leading ledgers can be defined. Just to take a practical example, there can be different international accounting standards like US CAP, international accounting standards then IFRS so the one which is on the basis of which the consolidated financial statement is prepared is the one which will be taken up with the leading ledger the others for the other accounting principles we need to define the non-leading ledgers so moving on to the SAP screen let's see how we can define the ledgers into the system. So the path is there on the screen for you. It is the SAP IMG screen. Then to financial accounting new, to financial accounting global settings new, ledgers, then ledger, and then define ledgers for general ledger accounting. Let's see the same on the SAP screen. So to move to the path, we first need to execute the transaction SPRO. Enter. Now it takes us to, to the IMG guide and we need to click on to the SAP reference IMG. And this takes us to the main IMG screen. Now in this we need to go to first to the financial accounting new, expand. Then we need to go to financial accounting global settings, expand, then 
to ledgers expand and then ledger expanding it and you will find these steps are over here on the screen to you so we are at the first step define ledgers for general ledger accounting the path is simple you need to go to financial accounting new then to financial accounting global settings new then ledgers then ledger and then define ledgers for general ledger accounting now to define the ledger into the SAP system we need to execute this first config step over here for ledger executing it so once you execute the system takes you to the next screen as you can see and you can see there are number of different ledgers already defined into the system as on the screen whereas in that the very first one that is 0L which is known as the leading ledger is the leading ledger which is defined by SAP itself now how you decide whether a ledger is a leading ledger or a non-leading ledger so that can be decided from the last column as you can see it has got a checkbox which has been checked for leading ledger and that is why it refers to that this particular ledger is a leading ledger part if you want you can deselect this and select some other as a leading ledger as well but it is preferred to keep the 0L as the leading ledger because SAP by default has provided 0L as the leading ledger in the new GL accounting and even in that you can see that the, 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 there is a table this is known as the total table so once you activate the new GL accounting this particular table gets into the system so now how we can define our own ledger account into the SAP system so to define your own ledger you first need to go to new entries so we will be defining the non-leading ledger we will not define any leading ledger in the SAP system as we will be using 0L as the leading ledger and it is always recommended to use 0L as the leading ledger part so moving on to define the non-leading ledger we can go to the new entries so as I clicked on to the new entry it takes you to the next screen now over here in the first column we need to fill the two character alpha numeric numeric or alpha code so suppose I take the code as a1 and I name it as G A A P so I define this first one as a1 for gap and the table you need to use is FAGLFLEXT. Similarly, you can define A2 as IFRS as well, and the table will remain the same as we can see over here. So, what I did is I defined two non-leading ledger on the basis of which I need my local financial statements as well so this is what I defined it over here on the screen now talking coming up to the total table FAGL FLEXT is an important table and this particular table is also known as the total table SAP delivers the total table FAGLF LEXT for general ledger accounting in the standard system when the new general ledger accounting is activated the total records in the general ledger accounting are updated in this one table that is FAGLF LEXT so everything is taken up on this particular one table however if you 
could have worked on the classical GL in that there are uh, multiple tables for different transactions. So SAP have streamlined this with providing only one table for all the data to be taken up. So if you talk about more on the FAGL FLEXT table, it has a total of 142 fields which includes all the fields which you can talk about. It could be a company code, posting date, document date, cost center, profit center, internal orders, financial statements, business area, controlling area, anything, whatever you can talk about. And even SAP provides you the option to extend this particular table with additional fields, either with predefined SAP fields or even you can have your new customized fields can also be added to this particular table. So this is how you define your non-leading ledger. So once you have taken this non-leading ledger over here, now we can enter on the screen. And as we entered, you will see that a new pop-up screen being generated onto your screen asking adding a ledger require adjustments to be made. So you don't have to do anything to it, just continue or enter. Again enter because we are creating two non-leading ledger. So two pop-up screen will come with the same message. So once I have moved, now you can go to and save this screen. So as I clicked on to the save option, this screen, this pop-up screen comes up to you so that you can save your configurations to this request. So you just need to click OK, continue. And once you have clicked on to the continue, again a message is generated. Ledger group A1 is created only with ledger A1. So whatever the non-leading ledger you have created or the ledger you have just created system automatically creates a ledger group against the same in the SAP system so it's all right you can click on to enter and it will give you another message ledger group A2 is created only for ledger A2 enter and you can see now that your ledger has been defined so once we have defined with the ledger, we are, as you can see over here, A1 and A2 are the two which we have just defined over here. So you must remember that A1 and A2 is the non-leading ledger which we have defined and 0L is the leading ledger for the company code. So moving back, we are done with the first configuration step in the ledger part. So we are done with the defined ledgers for general ledger accounting where we defined the non-leading ledger A1 and A2 and the leading, leading ledger will be 0L as defined by SAP. Moving on to the next config is define currencies of leading ledger. This configuration is only required when you want to activate additional currencies for the leading ledger. You can assign multiple currencies to your company code for the leading ledger. So in this case what the system does is the system takes the company code currency as the local currency in the first place. So the local currency that is the company code currency is specified in the company code settings. So the system, the leading ledger picks up that particular currency for the company code. But however, if you want to have one or more of the local currencies, then we can go and we can add further currencies to this. So let's see how we can assign more of the currencies in this particular step. So moving on to the next config is define currencies of leading ledger. We can click on to the execute 
and as I execute it a new screen comes up to you as you can see and you can go and add your particular company over here in the new entries so you need to take the company company code over here suppose I take it as 1200 and click on to the enter so as you will click on to the enter the system does is it picks the first local currency from the company code settings so that is why you will see that the currency type 10 that is the company code currency has been picked up from the company code settings for the leading ledger then the valuation is 0 that is the legal valuation then the exchange rate type is there the exchange rate type determines the exchange rate which is stored into the SAP system and is applied in calculating the additional amount fields in normal cases we always take the exchange rate type M which is the average rate so that is why the system took M as the exchange rate type moving to the next is your secure currency so it is basically the translation taking trans transactions currency at a as a basis so what the system does in this case is it calculation of amount in parallel currencies can be determined using the document currency over here in this particular case so system does this calculation of currencies with this so you have to take one over here moving to the next is the transaction date type now the transaction date type is basically the rate of trans translation amount can be based on the translation date or the document date or the posting date so in the translation date type we select the one of these dates whether the translation date or the posting date or the document date so what we can take is the translation date means the actual date on which the translation or the conversion of amount has took place so that is why the translation date 3 has been taken up over here so the first local currency is already been taken by the system as from the company code setting so let's move on to define the additional local currencies in the non leading ledger for the leading ledgers part so we so as to define the second local currency we need to go for the currency type so let's see what are the different options in the currency type so you can see over here the screen there are basically five different currency types so the for the second currency type we would be using the group currency so as to have the group valuation of the company the valuation will remain blank or you can take it as zero the next is your exchange rate type so the exchange rate type will always be M that is the average currency rate then the secure currency will be 1 and trans transaction date type so transaction date type if you look for the options there are basically three options one is your posting date document date and translation date so normal case most of the cases we take the translation date as <coughs> this is the date on which your currency will actually convert the conversion of the currency will take place so if you take the posting date the actual posting date will be taken as the conversion of transaction currency date so this is how you would be defining your second local currency <coughs> if you enter on the screen you will see that the okay you will see that now the currency has been updated over here so the currency is updated as euro over here similarly you can you can if you want you can go for a third local currency as well so you can take a third one as the currency type as suppose I take it as the hard currency then again the exchange rate type will be M 
the secure currency will be 1 and the transaction date type will again be 3. So this is how you can define similarly enter and you can see now the hard currency is taken as the dollar. So the company code currency is dollar, the group currency is euro and the hard currency is dollars again. So similarly the first local currency will always be the currency of the company code but you can have the additional currencies defined as the second local currency and the third local currency in the SAP system. In case you want to change the global your group currency in that case you need to go for SCC4 transaction which authorization is not with us even it is always with the one who who take care of the client so it basically it can be done with the help of the basis consultant part or the technical consultant so once you have defined these all steps over here for the additional local currencies for the company code now we can go and we can save the screen and you can see now the data was saved that means the currencies have been defined for the company code so now we can go back and we have successfully been able to add on the extra currencies to the company code so that is all about the defining currencies of leading ledger now moving on to the next configuration step is define and activate non-leading ledgers here we make settings of non-leading ledgers for each company code so as already we have discussed that the non-leading ledger are something which is not automatically activated we need to activate the non-leading ledgers in which company code we want that to be active so here we make the settings of non-leading ledgers for each company codes for the following one is we activate the non-leading ledger in the company code second if you want you can define additional currencies beyond the local company code currency which is as we have just so is also been taken to the non-leading ledger so the first local currency will always be the company code currency whether it may be a leading ledger or the non-leading ledger but if you want you can even define additional currencies to the non-leading ledger while activating the non-leading ledger account and the third part is if you want you can define a different fiscal year variant which will be different from that of your leading ledger so there are requirements where the organizations or the client want that their normal fiscal year should be followed but for some of the accounting principles they need a calendar year reports as well so you have your consolidated financial statement as per your fiscal year that is April to March but on the other hand you need the some other accounting principles reports which has to be on the basis of the calendar year that is January to March so in such scenario we assign a separate fiscal year variant to the non-leading ledger as per the requirement so how we can activate the non-leading ledgers in the SAP system how we can define the additional currencies and the different fiscal year variant that is what we will be we will be looking to configure that in this particular conf step so let's see how we can do that in the SAP system so the path is there on the screen to you and we can move on to the SAP system so after defining the currencies of leading ledger the next step is define and activate non-leading ledger so to go for this step we can go and we can click on to this symbol or we can execute this particular step so once you click on to the execute the system asks you for the ledger so over here the ledger basically refers to the non-leading ledger so the non-leading ledger which we have defined is A1 and A2 so A1 first of all we will take 
so as you can see the ledger a1 has been taken up and it has nothing over there on the screen everything is blank means there is no company code assigned to the non-leading ledger so what we need to do is we first need to go to the new entries and we need to assign the company code so let's take up to the new entry as I have as I clicked onto the new entry now you see the options have opened up so we can go and take the company code over here suppose I take the company code 1200 and as you enter on the screen it will automatically update the company name and the company's first currency which is the company code currency so enter so the system asks you is the ledger assigned to the company code that is used productively you have to click no if you take yes the system will not allow you to configure it so click on to no and now you can see the system updates the company code name and it also updates the first local currency from the company code settings now if you want to define any additional currency over here that is what C2 you can define suppose I take the additional currency as 30 that is the group currency and enter on the screen so it will update again you need to click on to no and it will update your second currency that is euro as we did in the leading ledger so similarly you can do for you can go for C3 as well so you can define up to maximum three currencies on the screen and once you have did this then the next steps comes up is FV that is the fiscal year variant so if you want to define a separate fiscal year variant the which which has to be different from that of the leading ledger then you can assign a fiscal vari fiscal year variant over here so let's see what are the different fiscal year variant in this system so let's take the separate fiscal year variant the leading ledger fiscal year variant is april to march so we will be taking a calendar year for non leading ledger so for the non leading ledger we took k4 and the variance over here refers to the posting period variant so we don't need that so we'll we'll skip that part so this is what you need to define you need to assign the company code the currency additional currency and the fiscal year variant if the variant is a different fiscal year is required and now we can go and save this screen so once we save this screen again the system gives you the consistency check and it asks you for uh, whether it has been used productively so you need to click on no and as you click the system will take the request of the configuration in the request number so as we clicked on to ok and the configuration was saved on the footnote so this is how we define the activated the non-leading ledger so once you assign the company code to the non-leading ledger the non-leading ledger gets activated so that is how we have activated the non-leading ledger a1 similarly you can go back again and again you can execute it and you can again activate the second non-leading ledger that is a2 enter again for a2 non-leading ledger it is blank so we can go to new entries we can assign the company code over here enter and it will ask you for the consistency check so you need to mark no and after that the company will pick up its first currency if you want you can have a separate fiscal year variant as we took k4 or else you can even leave that blank again you need to click on to the no so this is it and then we can save this screen and the system will take the request in the request number so this is how we we have activated the non-leading ledger a1 and a2 for the company code 1200 going back 
So this is how we are done with the defining and activating non-leading ledger step and now moving to the next is assign scenario and customer fields to ledger. This particular step determines what fields in a ledger are updated when it receives posting. There are predefined scenarios within the SAP system and we cannot define any new scenarios in it. So now the word comes what the scenario basically refers to. The scenario basically identify the fields that are to be updated in the ledgers during posting. A ledger can be assigned one scenario several scenarios or even all these six scenarios. So basically there are six scenarios in the new GL accounting part. The decision as to how many scenarios to assign depends on the business. On the business aspects whether they want all of those scenarios to be taken up or whether they want one or several part of that to be used. So one thing has to be taken care that you cannot define your own scenarios. The scenarios are predefined. You need to activate only the scenarios that the business needs. So let's see how this particular step works out within the SAP system. Going on to the SAP screen. So after activating non-leading ledger, the very next steps comes up to you is assign scenarios and customer fields to ledger. So we can go and we can execute this as we have executed it will take you to the next screen where you will find all the different ledgers on the right hand side you can see and on the left hand side there is a dialogue structure which gives your ledger. Ledger have the scenarios, customer fields and versions. So if I want to see that whether the leading ledger 0L has got what different scenarios you first need to select the ledger and then you need to double click onto the scenario folder. So as I double click onto the scenario folder you will find that there are six different scenarios. Even if you go to the presentation file you will find the six different scenarios. The first is cost center update which updates the sender and the receiver cost center field. Preparation for consolidation which updates consolidation transaction type and trading partner field. Business area which updates the sender and the receiver business area field. Then again the profit center which updates the profit center and partner profit center field. Segmentation updates the segment, partner segment and profit center field and cost of sales accounting, update of sender functional area and receiver functional area fields. So these all different scenarios are already active in the leading ledger directly. So it's a predefined active in the leading ledger by the SAP standard system. As we can check the same thing in the leading ledger 0L that these are the different scenarios which are already assigned to the leading ledger. So we don't need to do anything. We need, we need to let it uh, assign all the scenarios over here. Similarly you can check the customer fields if you double click on to that. So what are the different customer fields assigned to the ledger 0L? And you can also check for the versions. So even if you double click on to the version, you will find that only one version is maintained. So you need to check whether the version is maintained or not. If the version is not maintained, you can maintain your own version. You can go to new entries. And suppose I create one as 001. And then I select the manual plan, integration plan, and I assign over here as actual versus plant. So once you have assigned this particular version over here, you can 
click on and save this screen so once you save this screen the system will take the request so in the leading ledger which we have checked in the leading ledger we don't have to do much because leading ledger already have the different scenarios already activated in them with the version in it what we need to do is we need to assign the scenarios and the versions to the non-leading ledger part so if you move on to the non-leading ledger part a1 so you need to select the a1 non-leading ledger and then you need to go to scenario and double click on it and you will find that there is no scenario been assigned to it it's blank so we need to go to the new entries and as we click on to the new entry it will give you the options to assign the scenario so let's assign this scenario with it so let's take the cost center update and the profit center or the business area update so suppose I take these two different scenarios to be updated one is the cost center update and another is the business area update and once you enter its long text will be updated to you over here on the screen so if a scenario is not activated then it is it has to be activated now if you want to activate it after the go live it will be difficult to activate the scenarios one once the system is is already been go live you need to take SAP's help to implement new scenarios after the go live when the system is in the production part or in live usage it is suggested to activate all scenarios upfront to avoid any hassles in the future so just we have assigned two scenarios similarly you can select all of the six and those all will be assigned to it so this is how we assign the scenario now we can go to the version double click on to the version and then in the version part you can see again nothing has been assigned so we need to go to the new entries and we can take the version as 001 then you need to select the manual plan so manual plan basically is that if you select the manual plan also the system will allow you to plan manually as well and if you select integration planning the system will allow you to integrate with the controlling module as well and you can name it as actual versus plan and then you can go and save this screen so once we save this screen the configs the configuration gets gets configured in the system for the non-leading ledger a1 similar to it you need to configure for a2 you need to select the non-leading ledger a2 and again you need to go to the scenarios and you can see a blank screen over here so to fill the input the different scenarios to it we need to go to the new entries and then we need to select the different scenarios so let's take all the scenario from over here so I have taken all the scenarios over here from the screen as you can see over here has been taken so it's best to have all the scenarios taken up so as to avoid any future conflicts and once you have done this we can move to the version and again the version is not maintained so we need to go to new entries and select the version checkbox manual planning integration planning and the description as actual versus plan so basically selecting the version will allow you to have the actual data as well as the plan data in the ledger account save this screen and you can see the data was saved so we have covered the 
config step for defining the scenarios, customer fields and versions to the ledger where the customer we already discussed the different scenarios which need to be assigned to the leading and the non-leading ledger the customer fields is something which is very very rarely used but if you want you can add customer fields to the ledger which are already defined in the system and as a part of the version the version enables you to make general version settings for the ledger that depends on the fiscal year in versions you specify whether the actual data is recorded whether the manual planning is allowed and whether the planning integration with controlling is activated and that is why when we define the version we select the checkbox for manual planning so that manual planning could be allowed and we also select the checkbox for integration planning so that the, the new GL gets and the ledger gets integrated with the controlling as well so that is all about for the config step of assigning scenario customer fields to the ledger accounts moving to the next a ledger group is a combination of ledgers for the purpose of applying the functions and processes of general ledger accounting to the group as a whole the system automatically post to all ledgers when you do not enter a ledger group in a function within the lead, lead uh, the ledger group there is a representative ledger which is to determine the posting period and to check whether the posting period is open in the SAP system for the leading ledger as well as for the non-leading ledger so what the system does is if you could remember when we define the ledger the system automatically creates the ledger group as well it gives you a pop-up screen where it gives the message that the ledger group has also been defined for that particular ledger so you do not need to create a ledger group for all ledgers because the system automatically post all the ledger ledgers in the SAP system or you can say it automatically creates the ledger groups against the ledgers when we create the ledger in the SAP system now within the ledger group there is a term comes up representative ledger the system used the representative ledger of a ledger group to determine the posting period and it checks whether the particular posting period is open or closed for posting in the system if the posting period for the representative ledger is open the system post all ledgers of the group even if the posting period of non-representative ledger is closed so what is more concerned over here for the ledger is that their representative ledger posting period should be open then only you can post all the transactions into the SAP system each ledger group must have exactly one representative ledger that is why SAP by default automatically creates the ledger group as well as the representative ledger when we define the ledger in the SAP system so let's see how this can be checked within the SAP system the path is there on the screen to you you need to go to the SPRO transaction then to the IMG implementation guide and then financial accounting new financial accounting global settings new ledgers then within ledger you need to go to ledger then define ledger group so let's see how this can be checked within the SAP system the same path is used you need to go to financial accounting new to financial accounting global settings new then here to ledgers then ledger 
so we we covered that if you remember uh, these all config steps have already been covered so we need to go to define ledger group and if we execute this particular step you will find the system reflects you all the different ledger groups that has been created into the system and these were the two which we have been defined by us and 0L is the leading ledger which is default assigned in the company code or we can say default provided by the SAP itself. So, <coughs> sorry, so this ledger, so the these ledger account when we define into the system, the system automatically creates a ledger group and a representative ledger as well in the SAP system. So if you want to check, you can select any of the ledger like I have selected 0L leading ledger and then you can go to the left hand side to ledger assignment and you can double click on to that. So once you double click on that, it will take you to the next screen where you can find that the ledger group 0L has already been defined. So how it has been defined? As said, it gets automatically defined in the SAP system when you create a ledger. And within that, you can see that the ledger assignment representative ledger has also been activated. So this checkbox means that the 0L ledger has a representative ledger. Similarly, you can go back you can remember that when in define ledgers for general ledger accounting we define the ledger A1 and A2 and when we define it gives you a pop-up screen while saving the configurations that it shows you that the ledger group has been defined for the, the A1 ledger. So moving up within the same we can also check for the non-leading ledger like over here. So let's check for A1. So you can select the ledger and you can again go to the ledger assignment. And if you double click on to that, it will show you the ledger group A1 and the representative ledger on the screen. So you have to take care that there has to be at least one representative ledger. And that is why this is a mandatory requirement. SAP had made these things default. So when you create the particular ledger, it gets automatically created. So you have to take care that every ledger has got its own ledger groups. That is all about just to give you an overview on the ledger group part, which is again a part of the configuration step within the ledger. So with this, we have covered the ledger part, all the configurations with respect to the ledger has been covered and have been successfully been configured within the SAP system. So let's check all the config steps for the ledger that we have already covered right now. So if you go to the list of all the configs within the ledger, you can see we are done with the create company code, defining ledger for general ledger accounting, we're done with the defining currencies for leading ledger, then define and activate non-leading ledgers, assigning scenarios and customer fields to the ledger and define the ledger group. These are what basically refers to the part of the ledger. Now the another two config step over here is maintain fiscal year and assign company code to a fiscal year variant. So this is something which uh, you we have already covered in our enterprise structure topic which covers your enterprise structure configurations and the financial accounting global settings configuration steps where we have discussed about what is the field status group, what is a fiscal year variant, then what is posting period variant, how those can be configured and can be assigned to the company code. So that is what this particular fiscal year variant maintain fiscal year variant and assign company code to a fiscal year variant you can refer to our enterprise structure particular uh, particular training session and there you will get these two things covered up 
now we will be moving up to the next topic that is parallel accounting parallel accounting enables you to perform valuations and closing operations for a company code according to the accounting principles of the group as well as other accounting principles such as local accounting principles the new gl supports parallel accounting by either using parallel accounts approach or the parallel ledger approach both approaches are considered equally powerful the parallel account approach was also in the classical ledger and it is still there in the new gl ledger as well but the parallel ledger approach in the new gl is much better than that of the classical gl approach and that is why the parallel ledger approach is preferred in the new gl accounting part so discussing more on the parallel accounting part basically in a simple words parallel accounting means that a company's financial statement needs to be created in accordance with the different international accounting norms in today's world there are different international accounting principles which need to be followed and if you would be knowing it that you need to have financial statement as per us gap as per international accounting standards as per ifrs and if you are in a respective different country again their own accounting standards do come in between as well so to have their respective financials on the basis of their respective accounting norms or principles you need to have those things in the sap system because you cannot maintain those things separately somewhere else so if we talk about united states us just having the financial statement as per us gap in the us is no longer sufficient by itself in a globalized world of where there are a huge list of creditors investors bankers and business partners an international recognized accounting standard is increasingly been in demand and that is why to fulfill those demands sap came up with the parallel accounting within the new gl accounting part so as we already discussed there are various international recognized accounting principles like IAS IFRS US gap and we need to have respectively parallel reports or financials on the basis of these different international accounting norms so you can portray parallel accounting in the sap system on the basis of these different accounting norms this enables you to value your financial statements on the basis of the respective accounting principles and because of that to have those reports we create the leading ledger and ultimately the non leading ledger so the leading ledger basically refers to the us gap or you can say the particular accounting principle for which the consolidated financial statement has to be prepared is the leading ledger for the other ledgers we create the non leading ledger part so moving up with that there are the basically two configuration steps within the parallel accounting like define accounting principles and assign accounting principles to ledger groups so let's see how we can configure the parallel accounting in the sap system so define accounting principles so accounting principles basically refers to the different accounting norms which vary from from country to country and even international level there are ifrs which is applicable for all the mnc companies then again respective countries uh, accounting standards are there which need to be followed so that is what we will be mapping up we will be defining those accounting principles which the business wants to follow with 
So let's see how we can configure the different accounting principles within the SAP system. So the path is there on the screen to you. IMG, then to Financial Accounting New. Then Financial Accounting Global Settings New. Ledger, then Parallel Accounting and Define Accounting Principles. So moving with the SAP system, we can come back to this or we can again execute the SPRO, enter. Now we can go to reference IMG screen. We first need to go to financial accounting new, expand, then financial accounting global setting. Within that we need to go to the ledgers and within ledgers you can see that there is a parallel accounting option over here on the screen. <coughs> so parallel accounting consists of two configure step first is to define the accounting principle and the second is to assign the accounting principle to the ledger groups which we have defined so the accounting principle basically refers to the various accounting standards or the accounting principles as per international as per the local accounting principles on the basis of which the company is required to have their financial statements for various legal and managerial requirements. So here in this particular step we can define the accounting principles on the basis of which the company or the clients require their financial statements to be prepared. So let's move on to the first configure step that is accounting principles executing this step so you can see now it as I executed it took you to the next screen where there are already couple of accounting principles defined as a default like 60 as IFRS GAAP for general accounting general accepted accounting principles and then IAS for international accounting standards so these are as a predefined if you want you can even add your own accounting principle on the basis of which you need your consolidated financial statements or the respective financial statements from SAP system so suppose we take up and create one accounting principle so as to have a look at how the config can be done in the SAP system. So to define your own accounting principle, you need to go to the new entries first of all. So as I click on to the new entry, you can see it takes you to a next screen where everything is blank and whatever number of different accounting principles you want to create you want to define you can define on this screen so suppose I take uh, an accounting standard for India INDG or INDA and I take it as Indian gap similarly if you want you can have separate as well you can have uh, another one as US G which can be referred as US cap as well so these are some of the accounting principles which you can define over here and if you have some other accounting principle you can even define that over here on the screen so once you have taken a four digit alphanumeric code you need to put the description of the accounting principle on the another side and once you have did that you can go and you can save the screen so it's a very pretty simple config you just need to give the the unique code and the description to the accounting principle so now going to save the screen and it will take the config which we have defined within the request number so click on to continue or enter so you can see now on the bottom the data was saved 
So this is the first config step that we did within the parallel accounting. Now to generate the reports, you move, you need to move to the second config step that is assign accounting principle to the ledger groups. So basically these accounting principles are assigned to the ledger groups which basically refers to the leading and non-leading ledger. So if you need your financial statements as a consolidated one in that case the particular accounting principle which you use for the consolidated financial statement that need to be defined with the leading ledger. Apart from that can be assigned to the non-leading ledger. So let's see how we can assign the accounting principle to the leading ledger groups, various ledger groups. So executing the config step, it will take you to the next screen. As you can see on the bottom, it's compiling. So now, as you can see over here on the screen, there is only one accounting principle which has been assigned and that is assigned to the leading ledger because this 6-0 accounting principle is the one which is used for consul consolidated financial statement or a consolidated reporting perspective. So wherever you want a consolidated reporting or consolidated financial statements, you need to assign that particular accounting principle to your leading ledger group. Apart from this, if you need separate reports on the basis of different other accounting principles or for local accounting principles, you can define those accounting principle as we did in the earlier step and we can assign those to the non-leading ledger part. So how we can do the assignment? Let's move on to the new entries and here we can take the accounting principle if you don't remember you can go and you can use the function for key on the keyboard which will give you the whole list of different accounting principles so as you can remember we had just created this Indian gap and US gap so let's take these two Indian gap and the next one is the US gap now what I want is I want the non-leading ledgers to be assigned to this so that I can have reports or financials for Indian gap as well as for US gap. So in the Indian gap I would be assigning the ledger group. Let's have the list with the function 4 key on the keyboard. It gives you all the list as you can see and accordingly you can assign your own ledger. So suppose I take A1 to the Indian gap and I take US gap as a 2. So this is how you need to assign the principle to the ledger. So whatever principle you assign to the ledger group on the basis of that the reportings will be provided to you. Enter and you can see the things have been updated the configs have been updated and now we can go and we can save the screen. Continue. So this is how we created the accounting principle. We assigned the accounting principle to the ledger groups so as to have the respective reports or financials on the basis of different accounting principle norms as per internationally required or as per locally required. So this is about the parallel accounting. What it will do is it will provide you the parallel reports. It will provide you the parallel financial reporting for the company and which is is very very much demanded in today's globalized world where the competition is too huge, where a lot of legal norms are to be followed, a lot of managerial reports are to be generated. So SAP has provided this feature as this is one of the most demanding one in the market. So that is all about the parallel accounting part and with this 
we have covered the ledgers config and the parallel accounting config in today's training session now we'll be moving to the next training session that will be covering up in the next training part for today it's enough it's sufficient enough and you can go and you can revisit these all config you can do those things in your con in your SAP system and once you will do these things practically these will give you a lot much better clarifications and much more understanding in the SAP system so that is it for today we'll see you in the next training session till then thank you